Over on Jaguar Gator 7, a new baseball video is out. In this video, we talk about a broadcasting controversy involving Fox during the 1999 season, where they show the wrong game in Wisconsin. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, all with our feature presentation. One of the unique things about an NFL game is that no matter how the game is going, and no matter how many markets are actually able to see the game, there's always one market that will see the game in its entirety. There's always one market that no matter what, will watch the game until its conclusion, meaning that every second of every NFL game is on television. Obviously today, that's the case, since we have a Sunday ticket, and there's no such thing as blackouts anymore. But even back in the day, if the game was being shown in the market of one of the teams playing, then the game had to be shown in its entirety. As an example, if the Bengals are playing the Raiders and the Bengals are up 52-0, even if the rest of the country has flipped away from that game, people in Cincinnati and people in Las Vegas are going to see the end of that game, because you can't cut away from your own team. And even back in the day when there were blackouts, these blackouts only apply to the home team, not the road team. So there would always be one market guaranteed, even if no one was watching by that point, and even if no other market had the game, that would show all four quarters, since certain markets are exempt from a game change. Which is what makes this situation, in the game that you've been watching this whole time, all the more bizarre. Because in 1987, during a game between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins, no one, and I truly mean no one, saw the game end on TV. If you were working that day for NBC, you literally could have packed up and left before the game ended, because you had nothing to do. No one was watching. And it wasn't because of an event that cut off coverage of the game, or because of a technical difficulty that made it impossible to show the ending a la what happened in 2019 between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Rather, it was because NBC broke the rules. Kind of. It's a bizarre broadcasting story, the likes of which we will never see again. Because this is the story behind NBC, and why no one in the world could watch the ending to the Dolphins Chiefs game in 1987. Before I talk about the controversy involving NBC, we need some context to understand how the game in question was going, as well as the landscape surrounding the NFL, because that's going to play a pretty big part in this one. It's October 11th, 1987. It's week 5 or 4 of the NFL season, depending on how you want to look at it. And we've got a battle in the AFC on our hands between the Miami Dolphins and the Kansas City Chiefs. This game is so big and so important, that Joe Robbie Stadium, hosting its first ever NFL regular season game, is completely sold out, packed to the bone thanks to a brilliant promotion that the Dolphins ran, where they encouraged all their fans to dress like empty orange seats. Yeah, as you might have been able to tell by the date and the year of this game, this wasn't just any ordinary game. Rather, this game played in front of an incredibly tiny crowd of just 25,867 fans, was a strike game. After the first two weeks of the 1987 season, the regular players went on strike. However, unlike 1982, the NFL owners decided that they were going to play through this strike. Week 3 never happened, but beginning in week 4, the games would continue, albeit with replacement players. This is not the first video I've done talking about the strike and what went down during that. So if you want to learn more about it, you can do so by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And while some players crossed the picket line, and some notable ones I might add, like Mark Gastineau of the New York Jets and Tony Dorsett of the Dallas Cowboys, a lot of players did not, meaning that the vast majority of players you're seeing on the field were guys that had never played professional football or hadn't played in years, and were working regular 9-to-5 jobs before being thrust into pro football duty. This game likely would have had a ton of excitement before the strike, seeing as the Chiefs made the playoffs in 1986, and the Dolphins were 8-8 eight eight 
with arguably the best player in pro football in Dan Marino. But in October of 1987, yeah, it was tough for any game to have excitement. But look, just because this wasn't a battle between the real Chiefs and the real Dolphins, that doesn't mean the game can't be entertaining, right? Heck, one week later, the Jets and Dolphins played a game against each other with replacement players. And that was an overtime thriller that people still remember more than 35 years later. Having said that, this was not one of those games. Not in the slightest bit. Because everything about this game was ugly with a capital U. To the point where it genuinely barely resembled a football game. Especially on the Chiefs side. The Chiefs turned the ball over four times and managed just eight first downs the entire game, with a lot of them coming in the fourth quarter during extreme garbage time. The starting quarterback for Kansas City on the day was Matt Stevens, who completed one pass for five yards and got sacked twice for 15 yards, meaning that the Chiefs had negative net passing yards when he was under center. He was replaced by Alex Espinoza, who threw no touchdowns and two interceptions, and finished the game with a passer rating of 36.6, which is worse than if it did nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. The Chiefs had a grand total of two plays go for more than 10 yards. Think of how absurd that sounds. Only twice in the game did the Chiefs actually gain more than 10 yards on a play. Just for some perspective, at Super Bowl 57, which was much better for the Chiefs, they had three plays on their opening drive alone go for more than 10 yards, and three plays go for at least 17 yards, which the Chiefs had none of on this day. Their longest play was 16 yards. Kansas City averaged just three yards per carry, finished the game with 42 net passing yards, and had 132 yards total, or nearly one-third that of Miami's, as the Dolphins finished the game with 344 total yards. Miami also tripled Kansas City in first downs, winning that battle 25-8. I don't think anyone was really surprised by how this game turned out, and by how this game was going. The Dolphins were led by a fantastic head coach in Don Shula, who had planned for the strike, and the Chiefs were led by one of the worst head coaches in the history of the sport in Frank Gans, who you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. In Kansas City's starting offensive lineup, the Chiefs had just one player who had literally any NFL experience prior to the strike games, so they were starting 10 men on that side of the ball who were working regular jobs and who had never played at that level before. Combine all of that with the usual suspects you get from these strike games, such as poor special teams play, drop passes, terrible blocking, and wildly inaccurate passes, and you got an absolute bloodbath where through three quarters, the Dolphins were leading at 35-0 thanks to three rushing touchdowns and back-to-back -back drives ending with fumble returns for a touchdown. Now, when a game like this is a blowout, the television network is not completely screwed. A rule exists that still exists today that you're probably aware of, and that is the fact that any game that is a three-possession game after three quarters can be flipped to a more competitive game provided that the game is out of market. In other words, if you've got an uncompetitive game going on and you're scared that the ratings are going to decline because people know the outcome of this one and the final score is a formality, so you want to switch to a more competitive game so that the viewers will be happier, you are allowed to do that. Now, there are limitations to this, as no matter how bad the game gets, you cannot, under any circumstances, flip the game off of one of the markets playing in the game. There was a good portion of the country that was getting this Chiefs Dolphins game, seeing as you had the number one crew of Dick Emberg and Merlin Olsen on the call. This was the single header game for NBC, so a lot of people across the country were witnessing this blowout. And when the game got to 35-0 and got ridiculously out of hand, getting to a five possession contest, where the Chiefs looked like they had never touched a football before, NBC made the decision to flip away from the game. So you would think that this would apply to every market except for two, with those two markets being Kansas City and Miami, right? 
However, this scheme wasn't even being televised in Miami in the first place, since this scheme did not sell out, and blackout rules applied, meaning that any game that did not sell out would not be shown in the home team's market. Joe Robbie Stadium, as mentioned before, had about 25,000 spectators on this day, and the stadium holds significantly more than that, as in three times that number. So this game was blacked out. Now, theoretically, you should have the entire country watching a more competitive game, which would be the battle between the Indianapolis Colts and New York Jets that ended 6-0, except for Kansas City, which was, under the rules, forced to stick with this scheme in its entirety, since it involved the Chiefs. However, that's where things get a bit complicated. Because as it turns out, NBC decided that this game was so bad, so uncompetitive, and so boring, that they were going to flip off of it even in Kansas City. Meaning that if you were a Chiefs fan, you couldn't watch your team play for all four quarters. Although I use the word team very loosely, since these were strike players we were talking about. But wait a second, isn't that not allowed? Did NBC deliberately disobey the rules? Or did someone screw up? Or did something funky happen that forced the NBC affiliate in Kansas City to cut away from the game when they weren't supposed to? Well, the strike worked a bit differently. The networks were getting absolutely screwed over during the strike. Not only did they lose an extra week of programming in what was supposed to be week three, but they were going to have games with non-NFL players for the foreseeable future, putting a huge dent in their ratings which even led to advertisers pulling out and not showing ads until the games were back to normal. Usually, people care about their teams, and whether their team wins or loses. However, caring about your team can only go so far if the quality of play is bad. At the end of the day, people wanted to watch football. They wanted to watch real, competitive American football. And as part of the strike in the replacement games, the rule for the obligation of the network to stay with the local team the entire time was waived. If a game was ugly, even if said game involved the hometown team, it could be switched to a more competitive game that resembled something more akin to real football. No questions asked. Said Doug Kelly, the press representative for NBC Sports, on why he made the change in Kansas City, Denying Chiefs fans the opportunity to watch their B team finish the game against the Dolphins down by 35 points? That was done in the interest of getting a more competitive game to more marketplaces. And this led to a bizarre scenario, where completely by choice, and not by any technical error, there is no footage of the fourth quarter of this game. Seriously. Television coverage of what happened in the final 15 minutes of a game that the Dolphins eventually won 42 0 did not exist. Merlin Olsen and Dick Emberg, I'm assuming, didn't even speak or commentate, seeing as they had nothing to commentate on. They were performing for an audience of zero. The camera operators may have even left early, seeing as not a single person anywhere in the country was getting this game. Unless you were one of the 25,000 or so people inside the stadium, you did not see anything that happened over the final 15 minutes of the game. It was very similar to the controversy on Monday Night Football that would ensue a decade later between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Jacksonville Jaguars, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner, where the network cut away from the game early, and no one except for those in the stadium actually knew what happened. Because of this, the fourth quarter of this Chiefs Dolphins game in 1987 might be the only game in NFL history in the post merger era, not because of incompetence on the network's part, or because of a technicality, or because of a scheduling conflict that wasn't shown on TV. Which raises the question just how bad was the strike? And just how bad were the replacement games? Well, when people in Kansas City don't even want to watch their own team play, and when the local affiliate feels the same way, and when the network feels the same way, and when the NFL has no problem with taking this mess of a game off of people's TV screens and breaking the rules, 
that's when you know. That's your indicator right there. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.